Hey, down here. Back again. Well, I figured out something about my camera. When I went at first went out in the garage, I plugged it in because I wanted I didn't want the batteries to run down. I wanted to be able to go as long as I want needed to, long as long as I had a you know SD card space. And I tried to start it up two or three times and it kept just shutting right back down. And then I thought, well, I kinda remember that happened before. So I thought it's because I had it plugged into the power supply. And when I unplugged it, it ran fine until I ran down. I actually ran down one regular battery, and then I remember I was getting it out, the second one, and I saw, oh, I've got one of those power bank batteries, they call them, backup batteries. Uh, it's not really a power bank, it's just one little battery, but and it lasted about as long as, well, 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know if it lasted as long as a regular battery. But what it did is it used it first, and then it shut down. It didn't go on to use the battery that's in there, um, which I didn't have a clue. I'd never done that before, so I didn't have a clue. If I, well, I have used it before for a little while, but I waited till the other battery was almost down, and then I heard it and plugged it in, if I remember right. But anyway, so then I realized, oh, well, I used to run that. I know I used to run this camera off of power supplies, but it was the, that, the one I plugged it into is a 2 amp. If there's only one thing in it, it's two amps. If there's two things in it, it'll get one amp to each thing. It's a dual that I just bought just last week. Bought a three pack of them. And uh, uh, so I thought, you know, those ones for my phones, they used to work. So I tried it, and here we go. We're recording. <clears throat> so that's good to know. I was like, man. Because, see, I uh, was having so much trouble with my. I bought a, well, I bought a new, you know, a long, uh, yes, B cable for it, just be a regular uh, 2.0 type style to uh, B, I think it is, to uh, micro, micro, yeah, micro, I think it is. Uh, <clears throat> there's so many different small ones, but um, what I'm trying to say, <clears throat> why am I walking around? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and uh, it, I've been using it ever since I first got the cameras. And, uh, it works good, but uh, I don't remember my point now why we brought it up. Okay, yes, it shows I'm using mic. Still rolling up time, and I finally figured out by accident. I knew I knew I had to get it in 4K, but I could never find two of the settings it's supposed to have. Uh, mo uh, you know, like if you move it, mo motion sickness removal, <laughs> and uh, uh, and it set the the megapixels that you want. It's supposed to be able to go up to 48 uh, megapixels. It's done by software. It's a 13 megapixel CMOS sensor, but software is supposed to uh, to uh, bring it up and uh, inside the you know in the camera. And um, I was w watching one of my videos. Actually, someone made a comment and said, "What kind of camera are you using? That it looks professional." And it did really look good that time. I couldn't believe it. I noticed that when I made the video. I was outside. In the evening, there was just enough light, and I was in the the back. Sun's on the back of the house. It was just the right light, and everything. It just made everything look good, you know. And I was working on the uh, coffee maker on the hood of my old blazer, <laughs> and the blazer's been out. You know, it it's got tree uh, green stuff from and sap on it from the tree. It's been sitting there for years, you know, uh, under that tree, and uh, not being washed. <clears throat> and so that part. Uh, well, with the nice light in the background and everything, he didn't really hardly didn't show up so much. You know, I thought that was going to ruin the shot at first, but uh, I didn't care. I just wanted to get the work done. I wanted to show it. Anyway, that's the best I've ever seen it do. Inside, it's like it, well, you can't just go by this little screen on there. It's never all that accurate. Uh, although I think it's more accurate to what you're going to get than what my phones are. But my phones, it's usually better than it looks. With this, uh, you know, my, the top of my head right now looks like it's, uh, it is a light, you know. It's just all the light reflecting off of it, and everything is just too white and bright. I think it'll be a little better than that. And my, a lot of that's because my, um, these LED bulbs that fit in regular light sockets, they're longer by about that much than the regular bulbs, and my shade won't go on there unless I flip it, so it's not really being diffused by the shade <clears throat> by the uh it's not really a shade lens or whatever but um i don't know if there's any way to 
That'll just really mess things up, I think. Yeah, it does kind of look make this look closer. But if I get too close, I'll go ahead and try it anyway, especially since I have that movement thing on. Uh, if I get too close, it will... Uh, I can't... This is the only camera you know, I'm using, so I can't use my endoscope or anything. Got the tripod on it. I wanted to show the switch I've been working on. That's what I'm going to try to do. I think it's just going to be too blurry to show it. It's really hard to do. With the, just I'm leaning the tripod, you know. But, uh, and usually I don't try to do it that way. That's just blurry. Usually if you focus it for... If I focus it for my eyes, and if the camera can see through it too, then it helps. But... Um, I don't know if that worked. I'm not going to keep trying that. I don't think it's a good, very going to make a very good pitch, very good shot. But, uh, yeah, that's about right, I guess. Okay, so that is a micro switch on a circuit board of its own. I've had it off testing it and everything, and I finally figured out uh, two, three combinations to make it. To, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five uh, pads on there. And there's uh, several wires. Let's see if I can see how many coming up to it. It's very unusual. I've never seen one like this. I guess my all the computers I've worked on are too, oh, much older, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six wires coming in there. And I figured out that uh, one of them's, the way it sets now, one of them's ground and one of them's five volts. And, uh, <clears throat> but I am... Um, kind of suspect about the power supply that's in it. I got to. Th I started. I started thinking while I was the the can the battery ran out last time. I don't. I don't know how much I missed of my jabbering, but uh, let's turn around and look. I looked at the specs. I don't know if it says anything about the processor on this tag here. I looked at them a while ago, but I can look up the. Uh, Machine, but I don't. I probably won't do that on the video. I'll just do it on my own time. There it is. CPU PDC E5800. Yeah. So it does, you know they they don't want to tell you what they are anymore because they're ashamed of them. You go look them up, and they're like you know one one. I, saw, I looked up one. It was a laptop. Uh, yeah, uh, they had a bunch of them on sale at Walmart uh, for under two hundred. You know, like one hundred and sixty dollars, eight dollars or something. They were one gigahertz. And I don't even remember seeing how many, if that, whether or not, I, you know, I never was sure, never really said. I kept looking on several different pages, never really even said if they were even, they kind of sound like they were single core. And I thought, I didn't think they even made single core, you know, CPUs anymore. But uh, they said one gigahertz to two point something burst. And so, you know, I mean, anything, 15 years ago, I wouldn't have anything under two gigahertz. Period. If somebody wanted to give me a computer, I didn't really want to take it. I did take some several from Jeff because I just didn't want him to throw them away. And I thought, well, I'll figure out something to do with them. I'll put a, a lightweight Linux distro on them. And, and I've messed around. So, well, three of them, I, two or three of them. Yeah, two or three of them I used for years, one at a time, as a server. And as they got older, you know, like there's an IBM. I was just looking out there. Oh, there's an IBM that the, the USB ports kept dying one by one. And... Uh, then the fans got bad, and I didn't want to spend money on them, so I'd just get another one and bring it in and set it up as a server. But a single core, 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz, that was a 2.5 gigahertz, which is a single core seller on. But that's really okay for a web server because, you know, it uses a little less power than a Pentium. It had Win 7 on it, 4 gig of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's, doesn't, it's not that old, I don't think. Uh, I don't see a year on here. Do I? And uh, this and and it's the newer ones that that machines that they don't tell you. They just tell you a model number of the processor. They don't tell you the uh, PDC E5800. Yeah, that doesn't sound like. I was gonna say maybe if it was an AMD, but I don't know. Now I want to look it up. Uh, but I'm more interested in what's really wrong with it right now. All that's kind of not so important unless it's going to run. But I got to thinking, well, maybe 
somebody put a different power supply in it because this uh, this motherboard um, I'm not going to try to show it like I did a minute ago I know you won't be able to see it but the uh, the connect the main connector for it is a 20 pin and the socket is a 24 pin that's throwing up red flags I saw it earlier but I thought well maybe they just did that I've never I've never had a Lenovo uh, Lenovo you know IBM got bought out by Lenovo and I do like I said I have an IBM desktop uh, tower out there that I used for years as my web server but uh, this is a Lenovo and they're generally is the, the real servers that I watch uh, well, Morton's my playhouse channel. That's how I've been learning about servers for several years. Now I've got me an HP server now. That's what's my main machine now. Use it as a desktop, but I will probably put a virtual machine on it from my website. It's running on a laptop over there right now. But uh, because of all the uh, desktops I had, they not only, well, they got to making too much noise, and I couldn't stand those fans when they got bad, and I didn't want to buy fans. And they do make heat more than a laptop so i've been using this laptop for maybe a year now i didn't want to use it that long because i didn't want to ruin it i ran another one that i had that had a bad screen for probably a year or more probably over a two a year and a half two years and it uh it just finally the battery got so bad the batteries just can't stand being plugged in all the time and it was already kind of an old battery anyway you know it it charged up to probably 98 percent or something it, <clears throat> Well, maybe it's. It, I think when I first got it, it said it charged 100%, but it didn't last. It probably lasted about, say, if it was supposed to last two and a half hours, it lasts two hours, you know, like that. That's pretty typical. It's pretty. But it was a dual core, two gigahertz, and had two or th two or three gig of RAM or one or the other. It was a pretty decent. The only thing, one thing I didn't uh, don't like about using laptops for servers as opposed to desktops. When your power goes out, they, they run until the battery goes down, and then they shut down. They don't come back on when the power comes up. There's no way to tell them to do that. But desktops all have a setting in the BIOS. You tell them what to do when the power goes out, and you just tell it to come back on. If it was on when the power goes out, you can tell it to always come back on. You can say, if it was on when the power goes out, it comes back on. That's what I always did. And uh, actually, that server, I never did find anything to do that in, in this real server. So I guess they you to be professional with a professional server and use uh you know U ups systems and all everything like that and you never let your power go out completely so they probably don't have that feature i never could find it i looked <clears throat> but uh, so I, I tested and tested on that switch and i guess a lot of the when i was kind of beginning to figure out that uh, Maybe it is okay. I got it to get continuity in three different combinations. There's five pins on it, and it was pretty tricky to figure out. It was this. It's a micro switch on a on a on a uh, little circuit board, and it has uh, an HD indicator LED and a power LED indicator on there. And the button on the case is just a little plastic button that it was stuck in. So I just thought, well, maybe that's all that's wrong with it. You know, that's why I brought it in to check on it. But now th th it's it's just not booting up. But now I'm wondering, well, maybe somebody got so mad that they broke the button. There wasn't ever anything wrong with the switch. They just put a new power supply in it, but they didn't know any better than to put a you know, either either they know something I don't know, or if it really did come this that way. Let me look at the numbers on here. I've never seen one, a, tw a 24 pin con con connector on a motherboard that would work with a 20 pin power supply socket. It's not enough pins to tell it what it needs to do. It does have uh, the separate power, 4 pin power over there, but there's 4 empty pins there. Uh, I say I've never seen one. Yes. I have to. There's some some other boards that can go either way. But uh, let me see if I can read any of this. I haven't tried. I'll probably have to get it out. Light on. Yeah, it doesn't say Lo Lenovo. It's one of those little smaller ones. 
me get some screws out of it and see if I can, uh, I don't have to get it out, I just move it enough to be able to read the letters. Light on. Uh, that's just, I've never seen a light on power supply that I remember. I've seen plenty of uh, light on uh, DVD, CD, and DVD drives. I gotta turn it where I can work on it. Try to have it at least somewhat visible, but yeah, every time you get that's why I like to have three three cameras set up and then where I can just switch and use the OBS studio and I like to just stream live so I don't have to upload anything. Oh I didn't show you my switches. Let me show you those before I forget. I was kept talking about my I knew I had some, a, a little kit I bought of electronics kit with a breadboard that had some switches and stuff. And so here's what I have. This this is a micro switch I have. It's quite a bit. It's about twice the size of the other one. It has four pins. So uh, I'm sure they all, both all each probably goes to these two to those two. You know when you press it, but. Uh, I mean, you could make it go on there probably, and they even have little buttons. I could take that broken. That thing is just a. I'll try. Maybe I could try to show it to you. But you could probably use one of these little buttons if it was the switch. But the one, the it. But that's a five pin, and it. I mean, you'd have to have the right thing. I don't know if that fits on that. Maybe I don't. I've never tried to put them on. Yeah, I think it would. I don't want to get it on there and not be able to get it off, but. I don't know if that's a momentary switch. I think it is a moment. It doesn't stay in. That's a momentary switch. And that's what you need for a computer. Uh, I didn't ever mention that. But the power switches on computers, well, in the olden days, some of them weren't, were on and off switches. But that's bent. And then there's a... Uh, now I forgot the name again. I, all I can think of is rotary encoder. That's not what it is. It's a... We generally just call them pots. That's what I learned to call them growing up because the only time I saw some parts like this is a B10K. That's what it says. Uh, was in guitars, and that's what you call them was pots. Well, they call it that in radios too. Uh, uh, I think I thought of it, and I thought, oh, remember that, so you can say it on the video. Anyway, I can think of every other kind of word, real stat, and every other thing that it's not. Potentiometer. That's what they call them nowadays. I'm sure that's what they are supposed to be called all along. But, uh, yes, yeah, got a whole little bag of stuff. I, I was really wanting to uh, build some projects with my... I got a Raspberry Pi and I got a, 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 a Arduino. I have Arduino Uno. I did mess around with it. I put some software on it that made it play some music. But I always wanted to make some real thing that would be useful, but I, I never have found my around to it yet. And I also have a what they call a bug something, bug board or something. All it's really for is to put lights. It's supposed to be to help kids learn about uh, electronics. And <clears throat> I've had it. Shut that up later. I've had it for a couple of three years now, and uh, I kept thinking the only kid that that I could even think about giving it to that little bug board thing is my nephew. I think he's I think he's five. I don't know when he turns six, but uh, I thought about my father about not just recently. Well, I wonder if he's big enough for me to give him that. If his dad was into electronics, I would. I would have already done it, but. He's not. He's not into computers even. So, neither is his mom, my niece. Um, so, we wouldn't have anybody to help him. We don't hardly ever get to see them. They live up in Wichita Falls. And we don't get out much. But, uh, He came and saw, they came and, he came with, his mom brought him over to see us one year. My sister and her daughter, 
my sister's little grandma now. Oh, she's not grandma. She's Gabby. <laughs> so she told him to call him. Call her. She didn't want to be grandma. So it makes her sound old. She thought Gabby was better. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, do you know what Gabby means? <laughs> goes, what? And I said, at first I, I figured, I just thought, I said, did you get that from that TV show, Desperate Housewives? You want to be Gabby? She goes, yeah, I guess so. I think she said I didn't really think about that, but yeah, that's all right. And then I said, well, you know what Gabby means? And she what? And I said, it means you talk too much. <laughs> and she said, well, maybe I do. She's not really a real Gabby person, though. That's why I kind of thought it was really funny that she picked that. I figured she didn't really even think about what it meant. She probably knew when she was younger, when she was a kid, because that was a real common thing to say to people who talk too much. You're just so darn Gabby, you drive me crazy, you know. It's what your grandma would say to you or something. When she's the one doing all the talking. But here we go. This is a light-on power supply. Got lots of numbers. 180 watt. It can't be much of a processor. And, uh, it, well, if this is really the one. I, this being a Lenovo machine, I just can't see them putting something light on in there for their power supply. I would think they would put a Lenovo branded power supply no matter who made it, you know. Oh, boy, the writing is so jammed together on that, I can't even read it. One row is one one font, and another row is another font. One's bigger than the other. There's Chinese letters mixed in with English letters. Never seen any mess like that ever. Looks like maybe five plus five, three volt twelve plus all plus plus five three point three twelve seven hundred seventy watts. Okay, all right, got that. That's kind of the crux of it. So one, there's a rail that has that, and then there's probably a negative rail. A lot of a lot of times they have a negative rail. I don't know. It says it's total 180 watts. Total is the absolute peak, which a lot of you know, especially you know, like a bargain one will probably not even do anywhere near. He says 180 watts. It'll do 150 if you're lucky, you know, and it'll blow up if you try to draw 180 watts on it. But. Uh, see what it does say on that other tag it's like a tag with a barcode on it made in China for pin numbers pin SN numbers 2011-01-22 oh that's old now this could be I don't know how old this machine is and oh I went out in the garage and I was going to look and see if I had a power supply that works. I can't remember if I have one 24-pin power supply that works. Actually, I bought an adapter to go from 20 to 24 pins. And uh haven't ever tried it. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it out of a little bit and look, look and see if it looks like it's been burned up or anything. I lit, I was able to look through the, the that side already. It's the only side you could actually see anything. I can see that just as well with it in there. I looked in there and everything looked good, good as I from what what I could see. Couldn't see enough to really tell anything. It like I've had a, I've had a, I've seen a few two or three um go out from bad caps and uh, it's usually the smaller caps that, that blow up you know that go bad can't get it back in there it didn't want to go this is not i don't think a regular size power supply would even go in there there is these clips and stuff in there in that box it tells me that they had a special clip system for that power supply that belonged in there. And this ain't that, ain't it. This just happens to be one that would go in there. So either the, I'm thinking that either the power supply is bad or it never would run it to start with. You don't, you know, you don't know what you're getting into when you get,